I have a journal project coming up where there are a lot of bright colors and I want to make my own unique pages to put in the journal to go along with some of the other papers that I have selected. And that's what I'm going to be doing today. The one easy way to do that is with paint. So I'm going to uh, select colors that are in these pages and just make some painty papers. Come along and join me as we do that. This is Darcy Smith's Adventures with Mixed Media, where I take mixed media and combine it with junk journals to make unique, one-of-a-kind journals. So I've got a selection of paints which should work nicely with the colors that I want in this journal. Yes, yeah, some of them are quite similar. Um, and I'm not going to go over what they all are, uh, but if you do have a question about a certain paint, just go ahead and uh, click the, you know, let me know the timestamp and I will do my best to get the name of that paint for you. Uh, for paper today, I'm just going to use uh, what I've got on hand. I've got some of this glossy paper, which is for laser print, so I can't print it, use it to print on my inkjet. I got it for free from somewhere. And it's shiny. Paint is going to take down the shine. And then for tools, I'm just going to use... Oh, I've got my new paint scrapers. Let's, let's play with those. These are just paint scrapers. They're silicone. Um, I got a pack that had like three sizes. So I've got those. And then also like a an expired card. Uh, this brush, which has very... You know, just all different kinds of things. And I'm just going to start painting. And then my drop paper is going to be really cool when we're done too. But I'm just going to go ahead and use that as my palette. And whatever I use uh, to put the paint on is, is going to, you know, affect how it goes on the paper. I could go a little thicker in places. Right now I think I'm just going to do a bunch of papers and get like the first layer on. So I'm just going to do this on a bunch of papers and get that first layer on and then we'll go from there. I think it's important to note that different tape papers take paint differently because um, you just saw me use the shiny paper and saw how that did with the card and this is just 20 pound copy paper. Just, you know, the cheapest copy paper you can get. Um, mine actually came free from my aunt. I don't know why she ends up with so much 20 pound copy paper. She makes, yeah, maybe she decided she likes a heavier paper for the journal she makes. I don't know. But, you know, I'll take it because between invoices and painting paper works fine for me. So, you can see between, this was the shiny paper and this is the, just the regular copy paper. Or the glossy paper and the regular copy paper. There's definitely a difference. Whoa, that's way more than I wanted or needed. So, I'm just continuing to just make bases. I'm switching up colors. Sometimes I'll do them all one color. Sometimes I'll add a couple different colors, uh, depending on what. Uh, and also, you want to wait for that to dry before you paint the other side. Just saying. Because otherwise, you lose little bits of paper. It will come right off of there. So, and another way to get paint on your paper is to use your brayer. You don't have to have a big brayer. You can have any size brayer. But, um, yeah, if you don't get anything else, uh, I, I, prefer, I prefer a brayer even over a uh, paintbrush for making backgrounds. Because you just get some cool, interesting things. I'm trying to get my brayer covered. And the, that's the thing with the uh, the cheaper paper. It does roll up on you. As you can see. So just beware. <laughs> beware of the cheap paper. While it is good. See, and then, oh, then you can get some texture with your hair. When your hair gets dropped on the paper. <laughs> A little bit of texture. Uh, but you, oh my goodness, I thought it stupid hair. Okay. It stuck to my finger and came back over. Oh my goodness. All right. It won't stay on my head, but it will stay on my hand. What the heck? All right. So yeah, you can see where it's a little lighter here, darker up there. That's one of the reasons I like a brayer is I like 
the, the different looks you can get from, oh, I don't know why I'm pulling out a fresh piece, from using a brayer. And I'll add more layers. I mean, of course I could do this on the gel plate. You do get a different look between the gel plate and the other, the other things. You can probably put your paint right on there, but you will end up with like those big circle things. If you don't get at it right away. But if you're going to do layers, it won't matter. See, there we go. There's the layer. And then, oh, I want to, I think I want to keep this for, well, oh, wait, let me, whoo, calm down, guys, calm down. Let's see how this does on this paper, because on the glossy paper, it did some interesting things, which made me want to use it on the upper layers. Oh, it's kind of doing that. This is, this is making it almost, see, see how it kind of like skips and, and uh, does this interesting thing. That's why I wanted to use that for more upper layers. Also, if you want to use colors that are not next to each other on the color wheel, you want to make sure to let one dry first before you add the next, unless you want brown. Because colors across from the color wheel are definitely going to give you brown. And see how I got a little bit of that green in there and then the, the turquoise? I like that and it seems to do it work it seems to do more of it on the uh, the cheap copy paper than on the glossy laser paper I'm not worried that I didn't get the whole page all right see so yeah see so again a little bit of oh and you know how the other papers are all nice and clean and neat um, in the uh, the kits well we're, I'm not gonna make my painting um, style to go with a nice, nice, clean, and pretty. I'm, I'm going to make the, uh, the scrapbook paper match my gritty, grungy style. Cause everything I make ends up grungy, grungy, no matter what. That's partly because of all the, the paints and whatnot, but that's all right. So these were an underlayer because you know I got a good amount of paint on. This drop paper or under, I like under layer makes me laugh because it sounds like underwear because I'm a child. Um, so, so different ways to put your layers on, of course, is, you know, the credit card, scraper, uh, paint shaper, paint, I haven't done a paint brush yet, have I? Should it? I should do that. Um, I should wait for that to dry if I'm going to bring in orange. And I've been kind of like to get paint everywhere. I don't want paint everywhere. I just kind of put it on a different place each time. Now this paintbrush, it didn't get clean last time. So it's just going to give me these marks, which are going to be great for some of the layers. And uh, it's not going to give me full coverage, but it's giving me cool stuff. And that's that's what I'm after is, is cool stuff. So we've got a layer here. Um, I'm going to bring in some orange. It's fine. It's all on the same side of the color wheel with this. So with your papers, like so with one paper, usually in a journal I use about three colors. But um, with this journal I'm using a lot more colors. I'm using like all the colors. And um, I'm also not going to worry too much about how many colors are even on one page, even though I just talked like I was going to. Right, do you see that? This is just some subtle bits just by rubbing the brush on there with some orange paint. And that's how we get our layers and our interest, along with just making a mess and not worrying about how pretty things look. Let's use a little, um, what is this? Panacodone magenta. Oh, and I didn't do any background red because the red red I'm going to use is accents. I will try to make it not quite so bloody as, as uh, that might. See the or the yellow mixed with the, even though it was mostly dry, makes it look more red than pink. Because this is the color that right here is the magenta. And that's what it looks like with the yellow. Much more red. So I don't even really need to use red, do I? <laughs> Just 
mix it with the uh, the yellow and I'll and it'll come out red. So, so I was thinking that I was gonna have to use my um my red for accents, but really might not have to. Let's see. All right. So use whatever you can find to make your layers. Uh, you can even just take your stuff, your textury stuff, like this. And uh, let's see what color do I want to put on here. Uh, turquoise, maybe. Just go ahead and get turquoise on here. It does not have to be covering the whole thing. It doesn't have to be on there perfectly. And then, oh look, it went right through there. That's okay. And then, we can take our magenta, which is magenta on both sides. That's okay. We're going to get that piece that's on the other side. And just press it down. We got kind of a lot happening over here. Press it down in a couple places and you get some interest like that. I could turn it over this way maybe this stuff. There we go. And then on this side, just kind of get that on the there's there's paint there, and that's what I'm getting over here is just kind of smishing some of that paint on there. Just to get it in a few places. Almost like if you were using a gel plate then you would be like, kiss the plate. That's kind of what we're ending up with over here. Oops. I dropped some. Okay, so which side is more wet here? I don't know. If you don't like to make messes, this is not the, <laughs> the thing for you. And you do you. Some of us don't mind a mess here or there. Or you can wear gloves. I mean... You might want the effects that you get from this kind of a thing and you don't want to make a mess. That's where gloves come in handy. Let's see, what else can we use? <clears throat> so now's the time. All those texture tools and mark making tools. Now is the time to bring those out. Um, if I could bring out my gel plate as a palette, that would help a lot. And also I will want to brighten these up with uh, a little bit of white here and there. I don't think I'll use black though, because I don't think there's any black. Navy blue, maybe. Ooh, there is some navy blue. So for this, instead of black, I would more likely use navy blue as a darker color. Navy blue and also the uh, that dark teal that I've got. Let's forget the middle. All right, so just adding textures here and there. And I might even go over, once this is dry, could even go over that with more paint. And it's okay that there's some white spots left too. So for painting papers, you want a base layer, which can, but doesn't have to cover the whole page. And you want, um, you know, whether it's paint or using textures, you just want to keep adding layers until you like what you got. This doesn't have a lot happening, so what color would go good with that? Uh, let's do this turquoise. And, um, I don't want to use that quite yet. I'm looking for my card that I had like, you know, five seconds ago. Well, it's a different card, but it's all right. A little bit of yellow got in there, and that's all right, too. It's actually, I like that. And, uh, I'm just going to save, I, I could do a background with a dark navy blue, but I think I'm going to save that for accents, like, like I would use black. All right, so we added just more, and we've got a couple different colors showing in there. And that's the way, uh -huh, uh -huh, I like it, uh -huh, uh -huh. All right, what's next? Whoops. Gonna get a little texture when little pieces rip off each other, aren't we? Just gonna pull that through. Don't necessarily want a straight, straight line, but that's all right. We're just, whatever happens, happens, and we're just accepting it. That's all. 
do a hit, hit hit or miss just hit a little bit here hit a little bit there let's see we've got the light blue and that dark teal what else do we want to bring out on here maybe something in between the viridian or that might be viridian i'm not sure And yes, you can even just take your card and just go willy-nilly pell-mell and just give it another layer. All right, so here we have another, this is the glossy paper, and it's got a specific look to it when you do the credit card. So I'm just going to add more layers on that. You don't have to have glossy paper. This works with any paper. Uh, like I said, because, you know, we've got, this is just the, um, whatchamacallit. Let's see, do we have any more yellow on there we can get? Yep. This is just the cheap copy paper, and I actually kind of like what happens with that. All right, let both sides dry, or you're going to tear it apart. This, eh, I'm not loving this. So I'm going to tone it down with some light blue. Because the yellow can really make that. Um, dark teal, which is actually turquoise green, can really make it um, look dark. And stamps and stenciling, stamping and stenciling is also a way to add layers. So, well, they could be your last layers, or they could even be your first layers, because if I had done stamping first, then some of that ink would be showing through now. So just adding layers. Higgledy piggledy. This side I got a little bit half and then we'll just add a little bit more. And then this one it was braired on and it got a couple of different colors in there. If you don't like the uh, the sharp line that the uh, this gives you just keep pushing out on all the sides until it's not a sharp line anymore. I just had the light blue. Let's do oops, a little more light blue, maybe. Oh, and it's mixing with whatever's in the brush to give me, I don't know, kind of a rusty burnt sienna. I don't know. I'll use it somewhere. It's cool, whatever it is. And it's, on a, see this is, I know you guys, some of you like your clean brushes, your clean tools. And you might think, oh, you messed it up. But no, I actually find that very interesting. And I, I would have never got, I wouldn't have thought to try to do that. And I just kind of love that that is what I ended up with. I'm going to add another layer on here. And then on top of that, I'm going to do some of that plum, maybe, which will, well, it's not plum. It is, no, it's permanent red-violet. Sorry, but they didn't put the English one first, and that messes my head. So if you dry brushing, you're putting it on the brush, taking it off. But this, because I don't have a lot of paint there, and this brush is has dried on paint on the end of the bristles, which is why I'm getting, so you have to like ruin a brush to be able to get this look apparently. <laughs> Not necessarily, but it helps. So there we go, another layer. Um, some people like that, some people don't. It's okay. You don't have to like it or you can love it. Some more of the, let's go with the uh, red violet here. Oh, that's right. I was also trying to use for the upper layers uh, this because it gives me, it just does different stuff. Oh, and I haven't even. I haven't really played with these yet. And the, well, this is the red violet on top of the turquoise is making it more like a navy blue in some spots. I 
also get, oh, sorry, every time I touch my desk, the light flickers. I don't know if you guys see that or not. Uh, you can get a scraper. Uh, one lady I saw, she gets them in the uh, mechanic department. This one probably, well, I got it from Amazon, but it's for, for cake decorating. Uh, but they tend to cost less than the ones that are made specifically for um, crafting. Because, you know, once you put crafting on something, they want to charge you more. And then this is a, a Catalyst W-06 that I want to try. That I just got recently. And I want to play with it. Alright, let's find some... Apparently, I think these journals are going to be a million pages long. So I have a lot of uh, painty papers here. Let's see. What do I want? On Ooh, let's do some bright green. Why not? And my drop paper is going to look pretty bang and freaking fantastic, isn't it? All right. Let's see. I'm not pressing down super hard because I just want, I want it to kind of get a, uh, you know, here and there kind of a look. The first one I wiped off more, so I'm just going across this like really lightly. And the first time I wiped the paint off a little bit, this time I'm kind of keeping most of it on there. And just really, let, ooh, I like that even better. So thicker paint going across lightly. I'm not even putting any pressure on it. I'm just kind of dragging it across. And I'm getting these really cool... Just, you know, organic. I couldn't do that if I tried bits. They're also very thick, so they'll take a minute to dry. Let's see. What else? Just a little bit of that bright green. What is this green? These are new ones. This light olive green. Uh, the Master's Touch was on sale at the place which shall not be named. But Joanne's doesn't have as big of a paint. And Michael's is too far away. I know, it's like another mile down the road. Sometimes that feels far away. I do want a little bit of bright. I know you're probably thinking, bright green. Why would you put all the green on that? Because I'm me, and that's what I do. All right, want it a little bit thick. But I don't want it to look like I'm trying, you know what I mean? I want to kind of go all the different. Oops. Oh, I messed that up down there. That's all right. So we've got some different greens in there. This might not end up in one of these books. It might end up in a grungy book, but that's okay. I'm okay with that. Did I oh, this could use some bright green maybe oops yeah I like this color can you tell it's new to me it's a new to me color sometimes turning your pages can be helpful some people love this catalyst wedge some people don't I think it depends on how you use it that seems to be so I'm kind of getting it flat, probably better if I didn't use the side of the word, or maybe not. Maybe that's the secret here. And just kind of like spreading it across there lately. And that's how I'm getting that really cool look. I don't know. What if I press harder? Well, if I press harder, I'm just getting, you know, like a credit card. Which I don't necessarily, sorry, more stuff's going to go over that. It won't matter. Getting that. Off of there. <laughs> and some of that paint off of there. Alright, let's see. That has some bright green on it and some blue and the thing. Uh, has a lot of color on it already. What do I want to add to it? I might want to push it back a little bit. So, I'm going to pull out my... It would be gesso if I knew where that was, but I don't know where that is, so... It's going to be my top notch white chalk paint. I got a big bottle of it one time and then I put it in the smaller bottle so it's easier to use. 
And am I going to worry that there's a little bit of green in here? No. Oh, that's actually going to be kind of cool, isn't it? So I'm just got see, that's what the paint looks like on that side. And I'm just kind of putting it on the paper. So it's kind of like that. And I'm just putting it on the paper and just pulling it across. I'm not pressing down. Whoops. And kind of making a mess there, but that's all right. All right, we're, we're not going to mess that. Well, I am. I'm going to mess with this a lot. I'm going to just go ahead and pull it through and see if we can see a little bit of what's under there. Just on this side. On the other side, I'll leave it the way it is. Because if it's going to be a, in a journal, they're going to be on two different sides anyway. So that picked up that paint picked up a lot of the paint that was already on the paper. It might not have been dry all the way, uh, but yeah, that's when you add some white chalk paint. That's what you get. Uh, what about some more textury type stuff? How about if I go like super random <laughs> and do the red violet on the dark turquoise green with a little bit of yellow mixed in because why not? I mean there's already yellow on there. So yeah, that one's really dark. I'll need I'll need to I'll want to lighten that up at some point. Well let's just get paint on everywhere. Yeah. get paint on something just drag it on your paper and wipe the paint off right on your paper you never know what you're gonna get <laughs> you're gonna get color I mean that's one thing you know you'll get so to avoid getting the line in the middle sometimes I'll just start on the edge and bring it in through that way that way you don't get that line but I often forget and so you know you end up with a line here and there and that's all right it's not the end of the world that's just another layer stripes we want to do stripes we want to do stripes do, 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 do. what am I looking for oh palette knife I haven't used a oh, let's use a palette knife real quick because I said stripes but I lied all right palette knife will be perfect for this Go ahead and pull in So I'm just kind of like pulling it across and flat I weigh a lot of paint on it. So that's what that side looks like and I'm just Doing like I did with the catalyst really so do you need a catalyst or can you do whatever you can do that with a uh, palette knife All right, that's really thick. Definitely need to let that dry for a minute or two or 20 or 100. So when you put the uh, quinacridone magenta over turquoise, you're going to get more of a purple because that's just how it, it does. have a harder time getting this kind of a look with a credit card. I don't know why it's easier with a palette and a catalyst, but a palette knife and a catalyst seems to be better for getting that little skippy look, you know, where you're just kind of skipping your palette knife. Kind of looks like a map, kind of, sort of, in a way. Oh, I just did that. I just did a layer on that. It needs to dry a minute. In a minute. Do, 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 do. So 
we get it thicker in some spots than in other spots, which I'm okay with. Um, there's no place to set that. There's no, there's no safe place to set it. And I'll go through and do the other side of these papers too. And uh, I might finish those before I come back and show them to you. I was looking at the time because it's Sunday morning. Sure, went out some more of this. I wanted to do some skip braying is what was in my brain, but now I'm kind of stuck on this here. My my brain has decided to do this instead. All right, so I kind of want it to be like this up here, but then as it goes down, I want it to do that other thing that I was doing, like that. Nothing to worry about that. All right, so what is Skip Braring? Let's find one that has a good base on it. Just gonna some of that on there. See, look at that. Just picking up what's on the, oh my goodness. Also, her hand, her finger, whatever. Going to pick up whatever's wet down there on this side. All right, so skip braying. Where's my brayer? Here's my brayer. And here's some turquoise. And I'm just going to get my entire brayer covered with paint. Oh, it's mostly covered. And then just really lightly just push down, pull up a little bit, push down. Not push down, but you know, let it fall down, push a little bit, and then lift. So you just kind of lift, push, lift, push. Don't think I'm getting a, as much of a not really seeing it as much there because the colors are very similar. Let's try this with maybe this will give us a little more contrast. But you want to get uh, your brayer covered and have it not be too thick or whatever. So I'm just lifting up, um, pushing, pulling up, pulling up away from the, whoops, there we go, there we go. I'm just like barely touching the paper. So wherever the paper has bumps in it, that's where it caught there. There, I pushed it down kind of a lot. Uh, let's see. It's not going to show on this, but I just want to add... Some more texture to it essentially oh, oh shoot they're on top of each other so they're they're hooking up if you know you know okay so i'm just pushing down pulling up you don't even have to push down but maybe there's an area where you want a little bit more color so you push but it's just the subtlest See that, that there, it just adds another layer, another more interest, that's all. Oh, and you know what I could have done here? Would have been a good, it's still wet, so I still can. Let's just go ahead and pull out something. It could just be the back of a pen and just make some marks. Not all of it's still wet, but the parts that are, we'll get the marks and that adds literal texture is this one still wet too I think so. and you know we'll show the uh the layer underneath will come through a little bit more that was not as thick i think what if i use a thinner oh there we go this one's metal and has a thinner thing so even if the paint is dry a little bit it'll Peel it off more. Let's see. This one is very. I really don't mind it though. If you were doing a circus journal, then this would be a fun thing to do. What makes me think of a circus journal? Well, if you want to look at somebody doing a circus journal, Gail Gustinelli just did a circus journal. Um. Let's make marks for this. Too. This, I got at the Dollar Tree, and I was like, oh, won't that be cool to make some marks? I can't 
can't always get them to be perfect little circles, but you know. Also, it was giving me grunge, right? That's right. I forgot about the grunge. What if we have like... I don't know the best way to get paint. Well, I usually use my gel paint, yeah. But I was kind of like going back and forth. Oh, it doesn't do it on this like it did the other one. What was I doing it on before? I think I had more paint down on it. That's all right, though. I got some... I know, I look like I'm being naughty with it, but whatever. Just getting paint down. Just need some paint here and there. and Just random. Also, you can do dots with it. Oh, more hair. So, yeah, that one's like a total mess. This one... So this is like a really purpley purple now. So if I could get that color and bring it up here, what kind of shapes do I have for stamps? I could bring in some ink now. Of course, bringing in ink, that's going to make it... Ooh, yeah, maybe that. Uh, this is going to be like a quilting gardening journal kind of a deal. I need to get some VersaFine Claire in the... Um, like a dark purple VersaFine Claire. But for now, I will use this dark blue. I think that'll work. I think I have like a green and a yellow now, and I don't have a red. I have a blue, brown, and black. And of course, there was probably black on this, so it's not going to, but it's, it's looking all right, you know. Let's try not to get paint on it. I love this stamp as like a background stamp. So there we go. I'm going to have to clean that up. Might have got some paint on it. Uh, so would I consider that one done? I might. Uh, or I might come back in and add a little bit here and there. Um, yeah. I don't, well, more is going to get on it when I do the other side. And does it matter what's on this side? Not really. We do have yellow on there, so we'll just go ahead and start with yellow. 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 Right here. The yellow is a different color. I mean, it, yeah, I mean, it's in a different, it's, what is it? It's also Master's Touch, but it's 3.3 .3 fluid ounces, thick body. So, we'll just try this scraper. Got a little bit more coverage. This is the um, the cheap copy paper. I'm not sure if the other side is completely dry or not, but I kind of want it to be. And I'm not going to worry about getting every speck of it. And then what I might do is come through with a stencil, maybe even with yellow ink or paint, and fill that in so that Stencil, 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 stencil. Let me find a good stencil. So I'm just going to take a similar color and just, especially where there's white, go ahead and use ink. And now there'll be less, there'll still be some white, but it'll be less white. I don't know if that's going to show up if I do it on the yellow or not because it's a lighter color. In the yellow, but we'll see. Oops, we missed a spot down here. Were you telling me that? But how did I miss that? Oh, I missed that spot in the middle because there was a leaf there. So I'll just go ahead and do that. Yeah, it's not quite exactly the same yellow, but. Yep, close enough. So now those white spots aren't quite as white as they were. And yes, that yellow showed up a little bit on the other yellow. So we've got that yellow, that side and this side, which is more blank and good for writing on. Um, for now, for now I'm happy with that. Let's see. Let's finish some of these off. So this one... 
that's the back of it. Let's go ahead and I'm going to pause and cover the backs of these that don't have backs covered. Okay, this is on the cheap copy paper. This is using the scraper and the color is showing really weird. <laughs> it's really a deeper, deeper color than what I'm seeing. I don't know if it's because of the light. And this is Braird, which had some dark blue in there too. But I'm getting a lot of shine. Uh, but I think the point I wanted to make it, and that's on the cheap copy paper. This is where it's um, scraped on the glossy paper. And it just, the brayering takes away the gloss better than that does. I'm not loving the glossy papers just because they're just still looking really glossy. Except for some reason, this one. Which actually I can't even tell for sure if it is a glossy one or not. I think it is because it's thicker. So um, I'm going to hold on to these and I'm probably going to do gel plate on them because gel plating seems to take the shine off a little bit more. And that one's, that's, the braired ones aren't as bad, but the ones where I scraped on are just like still shiny. Although that one's kind of cool. Um, but yeah, that one especially is shiny. But these, this is what these turned out like. And I'm not going to do any more with those those shiny the glossy papers today I'm gonna bring them out again someday and play with them on the gel plate just to take down some of the shine somehow but you know and that got ripped so instead of gluing it back down I just ripped it all the way off because why not and that's I was trying to do some of the chalk paint see if that helps and it might help when I gel plate on them so these are not going to get used in the project I do not love them um, I made a bunch of just plain color is weird I think it's just my camp my phone I might not have the brightness well it does the adjustable for the eye but that looks does not look the same color on my phone as it does in person uh, so I did a whole bunch of um, just plain one-sided ones just to use for um, collage later in the project and also I think I'm gonna um, either scan them in all or take pictures of them all. These are just the one-sided ones uh, and all the diff all the colors that I've used um, And then I may doodle on them or stamp on them or something But I'm also probably going to um, scan them or take pictures of them so that I can play alter them in on digitally as well so these are just and even though you know they still get a lot of depth because there's always something else on there. Like this one still had orange on it. When I, uh, was that Brayer? I think that might have been Brayer. This one started out scraped then Brayered. Because for some reason, the orange especially feels shiny. This one I scraped on. That one I believe I Brayered on. Yeah, I can see the Brayer marks. So these all need to not sit on top of each other because that's all still wet. And then this is where I am on these. And I'm still going to do more with them, but I'm probably going to wait for them to be in the signature before I add more, just to see what I want to do. But there'll be more stamping of flowers uh, and just whatnot. So these are going to be pages in the journal. And I will put a couple, I'll, I'll pull out one of the uh, journals real quick. Hold on, I've got to go wash my hands. So these are the main pages I was thinking about um, with the colors that I picked. Um, one of the other sets that I have there is different blue that I want to use. But you can kind of see how these look. I know I want to fold them and show you, but I don't want to fold them and show you because I'm already getting paint on it. I tried cleaning up first. didn't work. All right, we'll just go ahead and fold this one. Um, well, it doesn't matter because, so like this. Would look like that. And you can see we've got those colors in there. There's the color there and the color there. And I think these will look really cool. Oh, I did some envelopes too that I just kind of started. Um, because they can go in the journals as well. Pretty sure these are all going to be journal pages, so, but I don't want to fold them all because I might not want them to be, let's see, we've got the oranges and whatnot in there to go with those. And then I also have, um, I had, where's the one with all the squares? 
Oh, here it is. This this piece here, which I think goes good with all the colors. And this is just going to be a fun journal. See, look at that. That's got some of the colors in there. And the yellow is not quite the same on this one, but it's closer on this one. So just kind of show you what these look like with these two. How 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 they'll like just kind of accentuate it and really make it be make it be cool. I think they're going to be cool when they're done. So you know, come, make sure you press that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos because I have no actual schedule. I just make things when I'm in the mood to make things and that's why you get such unique creative things because uh, I try to do research and then I'm still like nope this is what I want to do so although if you do have a suggestion of something that you'd like to see me try just say so in the comments I hope you all have a delightful day and go have fun and play with some painty papers. I think these ones that are for collage, I'm going to maybe try to doodle some like these like simple flowers that are that are in some of these patterns and whatnot. So I'll take take them upstairs with me as like some little daisies. Take these upstairs with me for inspiration, and I'm going to do some doodling this afternoon. I hope you all have a delightful day. Love you.